601. We got to approve the minutes for January 22nd, 2024 and March 4th, 2024. Uh, January 22nd, 24th and March 4th. Is there anybody online? For a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is there any selectmen here that are here for the Um, if I would place it back on the agenda because two of them wanted to come here and make their case to keep it on the warrant and have a public hearing. So. All right, well, as of right now, there's nobody here to, to plead their case, so we'll just leave it as is for now. If we want to get, get them on the agenda for the next meeting. Well, we're going to that. start running out of time. Probably yeah. April 1st might be okay. We'll have to calculate. It will be. But I won't be here that week. Well, Let's we'll see how it goes at the meeting sure. tonight. Maybe they might come. We can always talk about it later, right? Yeah, absolutely. All right. So I guess we can open the public hearing for um, 3537 Hastings. Not none of this. None of um, these. Before you hear any evidence, I'm going to need you and Jay to go through the. Do you have that? Um, oh, shoot. I have it online. One I'm second, sorry, please. Um, because three of you. You don't need a copy. It just has to be reflected in the minutes. That's okay. all it has to do. Okay. So if you and Jay can, here it is. Okay. You have to state that the board lacks a sufficient number of members necessary to have a valid vote, which you do. You need four. And without you three, you got two. Include the facts um, why you're in conflict. Identify the legal requirement necessitated by the board, and that means um, the rule of necessity, and that as a last resort, you'll invoke the rule of necessity. So I need each of you to do that. So all you have to do is state your name, why you're in conflict, and that you're invoking the rule of necessity. All right. Uh, Dave Antonio, I'm in conflict due to business dealings with people at Imperial. And, and I do to invoke the, the rule. Uh, Jake Ross, I'm going to butter to the proposed project. Okay. And uh, I would uh, invoke the rule OK. If Bill makes the hearing, or he can do the Mullen rule, he can miss one meeting. Mm -hmm. The next meeting, he'll have to do the same. OK, thank you. OK, so I'm going to open the public hearing. 3537 Hastings Street, the legal notice that was in the paper in accordance with Chapter 40A, Section 11. Notice is hereby given that a public hearing will be held on Monday, March 18th, 2024 at 6 p.m. in person or virtual in the Menden Town Hall at 20 Main Street, Menden. To consider a site plan review special permit submitted by John Nanat for 3537 Hastings Street, Map 11, 
142-35, map 11, 142-37, 18 Washington Street, map 8-242-18, and 20 Washington Street, map 8-242-20. For an age-restricted, mixed-use development compromised and comprised of mutual, compatible, and connected commercial and residential uses, sharing critical infrastructure. <clears throat> Owners of the property is Hastings Street Plaza, LLC. Plans are engineered by Tetra Tech, Nickerson Road, Marlboro. Thank you very much. Uh, we got a hard copy of the rendered site plan over there. Let's take a closer look. It has a hard time seeing the screen here. And I'll do my best to stay out of everyone's way as the presentation. You guys see over? Let's see, okay. Right. For the record, Matt Moyen with Tetra Tech. I'm here on behalf of the applicant, Hastings Street can you, Plaza. Can you talk about sure, I will talk as loud as I can. So, Matt Moyen with Tetra Tech, here on behalf of the applicant, Hastings Street Plaza LLC. <laughs> I'm here to talk to you, as, as just described, about 3537 Hastings Street in 18 and 20 Washington Street, a proposed mixed use development. Uh, next slide, if you may. Excuse one second, sir. Yeah. Ma'am, if you can't hear, can you come up here and sit while he's giving the presentation so you can try to hear everything a little better? I think I'll okay. state the name, so. Yeah. You can sit there at the yeah, table. Come on up. I want to take one look at this. And if you do any questions, anybody, <laughs> please state your name and your address when you are. So existing conditions shown on the screen here, we've got 35 and 37 Hastings Street, 18 and 20 Washington Street. Uh, the assemblage is about 18.3 acres with frontage along Route 16 and Washington Street. Uh, the existing uses on site are the Menden Driving Range, the former Barry's Place Restaurant, and two single family residences. Next slide, please. Uh, of the 18.3 acre assemblage, there's 16.53 acres that are considered potentially developable area based on the local bylaw definitions. That's this area, you know, back, back portion of the site here, um, left of the white dashed line. That, that area is bordering vegetated wetland and floodplain, so it's not considered developable for the purposes of the project. Next slide, please. So I'm here tonight to talk to you about an uh, age-restricted mixed-use development that is consistent with the overlay district criteria. It is consistent with the town of Menden master plan vision, and it incorporates all applicable Massachusetts sustainable development principles. The project consists of both residential and commercial components. The commercial component has frontage along uh, Route 16. It consists of a market with outdoor retail and a salon. The market is about 36,500 square feet. Of that, 8,000 is going to be outdoor sales space. And the salon is 4,800 square feet. There are 148 parking spaces to support the commercial development. Um, the area associated with those improvements uh, equates to about 24% of the developable area on site. So it falls in between the 20 and 60% max minimum and maximum requirements in the bylaw. Uh, as you work your way towards the rear of the site, you have the residential component. This loop road here has 32 new age-restricted single-family homes. Uh, as you look up towards the Washington Street corridor, we have a new barn structure that will replace the existing barn structure at 18 Washington Street. And just as a clarifying point, 18 is also known as 12 Washington Street. So 12 is the address, 18 is the, the tax parcel. It's a little odd, but that's what we're going with. So if I use those interchangeable, I apologize. Uh, and then we have two existing residences. You have the existing home at 18 Washington Street and the existing home at 20 Washington Street. Those will be renovated as part of the project. We focus the, the majority of the residential development to the interior of the site to both maintain the character, the existing character of Washington Street and minimize impacts on the, on the surrounding waters. Of those 35 units, there are four affordable units. That equates to a little more than 11% of the development will be considered affordable units. And then we're talking about, about for density, about 2.8 units per acre, which is slightly less than the three units per acre allowed under the local bylaw. So the density is a little less than we would otherwise be allowed. 
site access is going to be exclusively along Route 16, with the exception of the two existing driveways that will be maintained for the residences along Washington Street. The primary access point will be at the Route 16 Millville Road intersection with the, with the main access drive. It's proposed to be a signalized intersection. We're currently working with Mass DOT, as I'm sure all of you are aware. They're looking to do improvements along this corridor. So we've been working hand in hand with them to figure out what the best solution is once this development is incorporated. There's also secondary access just to the east here. It'll be a right in, right out, primarily for folks traveling westbound on Route 16 that want to enter the development uh, and certainly delivery vehicles and, and fire apparatus. Once you enter the site, there's two way circulation throughout. The sole exception to that is a one-way circulation around the rear of the market and outdoor retail for delivery vehicles primarily. Uh, we really don't, aren't looking to have anything other than, than firefighting equipment and delivery vehicles, so we're trying to minimize the circulation around that, that, the, uh, that, that use. Two-way circulation to the residential component. In terms of pedestrian circulation, primarily going to be from new sidewalks, both along the Route 16 frontage and at the intersection, and then internal to the site, we have connecting sidewalks between the residential and commercial use with dedicated crosswalk areas for safe circulation of the pedestrians. And then there's a walking path proposed to take advantage of all the, the woodland area and natural areas we're, we're trying to maintain with the project to the rear of the site. So certainly a benefit for those on site and ideally it'd be a benefit for the public as well. If you don't mind going to the next slide for me. Stormwater management infrastructure uh, throughout the site is going to be a closed drainage network that will capture and convey the runoff through a water quality structure toward the rear of the site and into an infiltration basin. That basin will provide recharge, water quality treatment, and peak rate attenuation. Uh, in whole, this, the stormwater management system on the site will comply with all the Massachusetts stormwater management standards. Right, next slide, if you may. From a utility perspective, there's quite a few utilities that we're going to be talking about here tonight. Uh, the first one is the public water supply. So given the town of Menden doesn't have available water and sewer along Route 16 or Washington Street, we're looking at an on-site on public water supply consisting of two wells at the rear of the site. And this dashed line you can see around the outside is what's called the zone one area. So that's the protective area for the wells for the, for the withdrawal rate right, that the project's proposing. All that infrastructure will be at the rear of the site. Everything within that zone one radius, with the exception of the gravel drive and the, the water supply infrastructure, will be maintained in its existing state. We'll also have on site wastewater disposal to the rear of the site up near Washington Street. There'll be two separate systems one for the residential use, one for the commercial use. We've done some initial soil testing and provided all that information to the Menden Board of Health and used it for sizing these particular uh, locations and, and orientations you see on the plan today. As for natural gas, electric, telephone data, all that infrastructure is currently available along the Route 16 corridor, so the product will tie in right near the, the main signal here uh, to natural gas, electric, telephone data as needed to support the development. Fire protection is also provided. There's a cistern, two, they're really a twin cistern at the secondary access point. It's a 40,000 gallon uh, cistern for fire protection. That was based on a discussion we had with the prior fire chief about providing additional protection to the Menden Center District as opposed to just the project. So we've maintained that uh, on this site. And then there's a second cistern located behind the salon just as you're entering the residential component. That will be used for both the, the on-site residential and commercial in concert with the one on the uh, Next slide, please. Oops, sorry. Right. I'm, one back. My apologies. Jump the gun. <laughs> uh, in terms of landscaping, you can see here a lot of green space. The dark green is the existing woodland to remain. The lighter green you see throughout is a combination of lawn areas, perennials, annuals, shrubs. Um, those details will be worked out as, as the project evolves. But what I want to focus on primarily is this dark wooded area that we're going to maintain. And these, these symbols you see along the perimeter and the interior, those are the, the proposed trees for the project. So on the commercial side of things, we have interior landscape islands. We also have perimeter screening along uh, 
primarily along so 33 Hastings will have screening along, low screening along the Route 16 frontage, and some screening along the rear of the salon as well. As you work your way into the residential area, we have a nice band of screening to break up the commercial component and the residential component. And then making your way around the residential development, there'll be street side plantings, there's perimeter plantings uh, between Washington Street and the residential development, primarily to kind of shield that from view as you're driving down Washington Street. And then this mass of existing vegetation that will remain. Now we can go to the next slide. Thank you. On the architectural side of things, looking for a country style feel for both the commercial and residential component. This is just an architectural representation of what uh, the client is thinking for the residential units. This is not exactly what it's going to be, but this is intended to give you an idea of the feel they're going for. Next slide, please. And then we have some, some elevations of the market and outdoor retail. Top of the screen here is the front elevation. So you have the main entrance to the market kind of on the right hand side of the site. You have outdoor retail on the left hand side. And as you work your way down this, this screen, you know, the rear is kind of pretty basic. And then the two side elevations. Next slide, if you would. So we're, we're primarily here looking for uh, age-restricted mixed-use development, special permit from the board. Uh, there's plenty of justification in, in the submission, but just to kind of hit on the highlights, and most importantly, we meet the criteria of the overlay district and we're consistent with the town amendment vision in the master plan. Uh, the age-restricted use certainly meets a need both in, in town and, and really statewide. It's, it's something that's lacking for housing. We put a lot of time and thought into the density of the development, trying to kind of tighten it up towards Route 16 to the center of the site to minimize any impacts on abutters in the surrounding area. So we tried to efficiently use the land we had to both minimize sprawl throughout the town and to focus the development where it wants to be, which is close to the Route 16 corridor. With that, was trying to maintain the Washington Street, the existing character on Washington Street, so maintaining as much vegetation as we can through this area before we get to what's basically be a, like a, an on-site field, if you will, through the trees, and then maintaining uh, the existing residence at 18 and, and really trying to mimic the existing barn, but in, in a new structure. Uh, the signalized intersection down along Route 16 will certainly make life a lot easier if you're trying to take lefts onto Route 16 or onto Millville Road, so it'll improve both the safety and operations of that area. There's the added firefighting benefits and then the positive fiscal impact that the development will provide. Next slide, if you would. We are requesting a, one waiver as part of the project and it's a request for a reduction in parking, specifically for the commercial component as allowed under the bylaw. Uh, we've spent some time really trying to think about what the demand would be for the use. And then we've also looked at some guidance, a, a model parking bylaw, a smart parking bylaw that the state put out to try to focus on hitting our needs, minimizing the amount of impervious, which requires more stormwater treatment, more impacts to natural areas. And then we have a transportation demand management plan that will encourage you know, bicycles, electric vehicles, you know, car carpooling for workers. So we have we've focused on that to try to come up with a parking program that really fits the need in the town and for the use. One more slide, if you would. And to just kind of hit on the highlights, if you miss anything, everything else, so you get this great, uh, you know, big thing consistent with the overlay district and the, and the master plan. I've said that a few times. It's really an ideal location for development. We have a, a developed Route 16 corridor, adding a commercial component to an already commercialized corridor. We've got existing infrastructure that's easy to tap into. We have space for on site water and wastewater. Uh, and it's proximity to the Menton Center District. So the, the whole idea of this mixed use approach is walkability, kind of recreating a, a small town feel. So you don't want this to be out in the middle of nowhere. You want this where, where your dense development is, where your, you know, your dense residential is, so that people can ideally bike, walk, interact uh, in one location. Some of the sustainable development principles that we've incorporated, and, and we've incorporated all the applicable ones. There are 10 that Massachusetts has put out there. These are really the highlights. We're concentrating the development, mixing the uses, residential, commercial. We're expanding the opportunity for housing choices, the, primarily the age restricted housings, two, two unit housing that doesn't necessarily exist in, in rural settings where 
when all the kids are gone, as someone who has little kids, someday they'll be gone. The house is going to be too big, but maybe we don't want to leave town. This is a good opportunity for folks to stay in town. As I just mentioned, walkable neighborhoods, dense development in a dense area, and then trying to preserve uh, open space as best we can and, and minimize sprawl. So 35 units in a fairly dense area uh, is, is really beneficial to, to the housing demand in town. Signalized intersection improvements to safety and operations, firefighting benefits, and then of course the economic benefits that the commercial and residential components will bring to town. So that's everything I have for kind of an overview. Uh, would like to give the board an opportunity to ask questions, provide comments, and focus on what you guys are most interested in. Um, I just wanted to go over a couple things. One with the board. Technically, this is the special permit under the Armon, called the Armon. But it's also um, a special permit for a stormwater permit, which Jeff looks at anyway. Right. Um, as we do any major or any any development that comes in front of the board, we distributed this all the plans and narratives to the department heads. We received comments from DPW. We just wanted to make sure the roads were staying private. We didn't want anything to do with it, which we assured him they would. <coughs> Uh, the Board of Health has asked for some more time for their consultant to take a look at the proposal as far as septic and, and water is concerned. Um, obviously, they get as much time as they want. Um, and um, we received comments, preliminary co comments from the conservation agent, which I'll just, there are quite a few. I think you've got these in the, your packet. But she, you know, she goes through that she wants to make sure that the mass um, stormwater principles are taken care of, that um, who's going to take care of the conservation area? Are we deeding this off to somewhere or is it the homeowners association? That's something you'll have an opportunity to comment. I think conservation on. will probably control that. They will, they, that will be part of their hearing. Uh, I don't think I'd have to look at the bylaw. I don't think we have any guidelines toward that. We probably should. I'll double check. Um, a comment about the part, uh, the walking path, um, and that to make sure it's four foot wide, um, and that it's protected when it's within the hundred foot buffer zone. I'm paraphrasing here. Anybody would like a copy of this? We have it in our office. You already have it, and they'll be responding to this. Um, Want to make sure the trails are accessible if possible. Um, that they are in front or will be. Are you in front of Conscom yet? We will be. So we've submitted a notice of intent application. We're on the agenda for next Thursday, I believe it is. Okay. Um, Wants to know whether the roadways will be gravel or not. It's a good question. And my thing won't scroll down, so just bear with me. Um, the conservation, they you got they did not get did they get a set of plans? Oh yeah. So they do. She's that. commenting on these. These are preliminary comments. She paraphrased that. We'll ask them to respond to each and every one. You have them and the public, their public documents. Okay, just want to make sure. And lastly, usually right here we'll have Jeff Graves, our civil engineer, but he is very sick. As I sent you his email. I talked to Jeff Friday, and he said he wasn't feeling great. I didn't know it was that bad, <coughs> but uh, unfortunately, we won't have his comments till the next meeting. I hope. Right. right. Yeah, that's so cool. he's okay. Um, and then I had some of my own comments. Um, um, I know that you're talking. Could you go back to where the house is? The two existing. Yeah, right. Yeah, well, if you keep going back to a few slides, it'll be the, the old ones on Washington. Yeah, yeah, keep going back a couple slides. Have they? No, you haven't gone to the historic district on these yet, have you? Uh, no, not yet. So we're going to be going through the MEPA process at the state level. Uh, so that will require. But there's a historic to, district yeah, that you'll be required to get approval yeah. to any architectural changes Correct. you're making. All to all three, actually. Yeah. The two houses in the barn. Yeah. Um, emergency access. You're not using Washington Street as an emergency access. No. no. That was the old plan, I guess. 
Yeah, uh, they did have. We one, assume yeah. they were gonna, but but that's good though. That yeah, keeps everything. Yeah. No, so these two access points, points the unless the fire chief Pardon has. Me? The fire department said it was okay. Yeah, they did. Yeah, as I say, unless the fire chief has concerns, but the, the understanding where we left it last time was these two points of access and the fact that this kind of loop road is so proximate to these two points okay. that that would be satisfactory. And then the access. vegetation mm -hmm. you're uh, using to separate the houses and the commercial and the, the other, Washington Street, is there a berm? There's no berm proposed right now. Any reason why not? We don't, see, help. we don't see a need for one, okay. given the fact that the existing grade, both from Route 16 and from Washington Street, falls off to the back of the site towards and the wetland. You're, you're almost going to kind of sort of see over this as you look in, and this is the darker green you see here, are evergreens. Yeah. So the idea is to not make a wall, because that, that never yeah. looks great, but Burn really doesn't start, have to, be a wall, really start to can... screen it. The uh, problem with berms is you start diverting stormwater. Concentrating storm well, water, which, there which is, is a challenge. Yeah. A big, Sometimes they just late. Uh, yeah. And lastly, uh, or at least on that topic, um, you're giving us a landscaping plan. There is a landscaping okay. plan. Okay, I have it. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, it starts the back. Of the where are you at with MassDOT? It's it's ongoing. So as we go through the MEPA process, they will begin providing more direct comments. We've had initial discussions with them about our traffic <coughs> impact and access study. We've had initial discussions about intersection controls, but we need to go through that state process before they really start providing definitive comments and direction. Yeah. And that's that's a typical thing for any project that requires, that hits the thresholds and requires a state. Yeah, I know, and you know, they're getting closer to finalizing. Yeah. And yeah. we have another project at the, you'll be seeing maybe at the next meeting, the intersection of North and Milford. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. one, one main. The old oh, Finio one property. Oh, Fino, yeah. Um, Fino, is that it? Sorry. <laughs> um, and so they're also going back to mass DOT because these are all changes. So There's a lot of action. That's timing happening. is yeah. important if yeah, you get yeah. Um, for you and for the yeah, other applicant. Yeah. I'm good. I got a question about, so the two houses that are on Washington Street, mm -hmm. those are going to be included in the over 55 or those, those, right. okay. And those, I know you have a, you have a septic system for all the houses in there, but those two houses will be on still on their own private septic or are they included in the. This one will be on its own private septic. Okay. This one we're going to pull. You're going to include it into yes. that. Okay. Yes. Love to pull this one in, but it's a little, just, little too far away. It doesn't make sense. In right. terms of time if, you can, if you can get it there, that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Thank you. That's all. I, that's, um, I mean, other than what Jeff, Jeff is going to go through everything and pick everything apart and look at it, you know, um, and come back with his opinions. I mean, at this point, I, we could take a few questions from the audience or anybody. Are these, a, are these all two bedroom or one bedroom? Yeah, two bedroom. Yeah. Two bedroom with a garage. Yeah. So if this is not going to be a homeowners association, then the town's going to have to accept the road. It is expected to be a homeowners association. Okay. So being a homeowners association, what are you what are you planning on doing for snow removal? Where are you gonna where are you gonna pile it up? Are you gonna truck it off site? What's gonna go on? Yeah. So the commercial component will likely be trucked off site, like the applicant does at their other developments. The residential component will be like any other neighborhood. Primarily, it's going to be you know plowed up against the edge of the road if you get. You know, excess snow, then they'll have to loop up. But I'm looking at the way this is designed with the circle. Where are you gonna, where are you gonna push it to? Yeah, you typically ask where snow storage is going to be on site, right? Right. I think you might want to take a look at that. Yeah. So, so snow storage on site in the commercial is some dedicated spaces over here. Snow okay. storage in the residential is going to be between driveways, right, along the shoulders. To the, to the just like any other subject, just like any other subject that, that you would see. Exactly. To okay. the extent that it gets to a point. Where, you know, so you say we get back to that. Yeah, I mean, storms, they're going to have to remove some of the snow. Right, the, the town yeah. would not, town would if not. the town took the road over, they would not be removing snow. They would just be plowing it and, you know, dealing with it as time goes on. Correct. Moving now, it around. The, is the question rooted in the density of the project and yeah. the lack of space for yeah. it? Yeah. yeah, to the extent there's a problem with snow storage on site, which we don't anticipate there would be, no, not unlike any other. What's the road width? 24 feet. The distance between the units? Distance between the units is 20 feet. 
All right, let's go to this point. A little more than that. All right. Any other questions for the? So you're gonna have a public water supply? Public water supply, correct. Yep. Two wells. Where the is the well? Two yeah, wells. Circle there. Right. That's what we're saying. And then the circle you see here is the protective radius for the withdrawal rate we have, which okay. is a total of twelve thousand gallons per day. And that's yeah, public, right? So that's that's why you have to have that radius. The radius is important to protect uh, the environment, the water, protect supply, yeah. the water supply. So you need this radius. You can't have development stuff. in that radius with the exception of direct improvements. So like the well tank and the, and the pump house can be in the ground of that can be there, but you can't. They want you to maintain the natural condition. Uh, is that well supplying water to the to the grocery store it as is. well? It'll provide to residential and commercial. And it's enough water there per, per gallon if there's enough. We have to run a pumping test. So yep. DEP has approved. Uh, us running a pump and test for up to 12,000 gallons per day. The results of that will be telling us to what our withdrawal rate can be. Okay. Um, the initial indications are there's no concerns about water given the expansive wetland to the rear and how much undeveloped area there is there. But until you run a pumping test, you know, you, don't know. you can't show DEP you have it. Yes, right. We have to go through that process and they've given us the green light to do so. Will those wells potentially have to Hold on, hold on. Oh, you got to state your name, oh, address. Oh. And then you can, but you, we, we, one, we just got to get through everybody at the, on the, on the board, and then we're going to uh, allow the uh, audience to talk. Okay. Thank you. I have one follow up, if I may, before Jay. The two, are they <coughs> private parcels <laughs> with the radius? Right, these three. Yes. Do you have control over those? The applicant is actively working on either some type of control, right? Easement versus right. Right. restriction okay. easement. That they'll have to have that. Yeah, that that's all required by DEP. Right. Yeah, the applicant has to have some control over the entire zone. That they'll never be. Right. Yeah. yeah, and these areas are really of no value to the abutters. This is all well. So might it's undevelopable now. and yeah, there's there might be some value now. <laughs> yeah, price change. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In terms of development. Uh, um, just based on the sketch for the store, the grocery store, is there a commercial space above? I saw there's windows in the set. Looks like the no, this is aesthetics. just aesthetics. Yeah, yeah, single floor market. Um, the architects still work on the floor, but I, you know, any other grocery store, yeah. maybe there's like an office mezzanine, small space for sure. you know, the manager, but no intention of a second store here. Okay. Are there are there plans if there's going to be a traffic light there? Are there plans for a crosswalk to go across the street to the sub shop the coffee shop those. yeah yeah if you might don't mind going back to that site plan hopefully show up on here or not but yeah so crosswalk here across the main site drive and then you've got a crosswalk from our site to this central island that'll allow you to get to both the, the gas station Dunkin Donuts all the, the yeah. other commercial uses here and then across this kind of right turn lane to get to quick plaza and then the sidewalks that continue down 16. Um, curious if there's any study done on the impact of the schools. I know it's over 55, but only one residents required to be over 55. And if you have local residents who are looking to downsize, they're leaving a single family home to move into a smaller facility like this and potentially have a new family moving into that residence and bringing more students and kids into the classroom. So is there any thought on the impact of that? We've looked at you know this particular development. What happens when people sell houses? You know, whether they move here, or they move out of town. That's just normal. Yeah. Normal change of ownership. Uh, what so we have a look what was the impact of very what did study? very few? The studies that the state have done, has done for this type of use, especially with a two bedroom unit, very little yeah. school aged children. I think we accounted for a handful just in our financial numbers as part of that impact assessment. Uh, but typically, you don't see any with two bedroom okay so maybe guesswork at best it's based on some state guidance yeah. so they've, they've looked at this across the state both for affordable housing units and then for these agents maybe agencies. maybe if you look up that yeah. number and pass yeah we, we've got it's in the financial the fiscal impact assessment it is in the filing yeah, okay. there's some more details in there but in general you don't see, we'll highlight it you don't see a lot of school age um, children okay uh, thank you and then just one quick question i guess i don't know it sounds like there'll be other sessions and maybe questions will come in but um, with regard to the septic and the uh, the well locations how do you determine whether is it just having is it mainly driven by the ability to create that buffer or 
you know, could they be flip flopped or what's the decision making process like for where those go? There's a lot of decisions that go into that, but you, you kind of hit the nail on the head here. The primary one is this zone one radius. So that's driven by how much water you're withdrawing from the ground. And then you ideally want to locate wells and wetland areas near waterways, near those types of resources that yeah, feed water back into the ground. So that was the driver for putting the wells here. There's setback requirements from property lines, from private wells, from resource areas that go into play for where you set the soil absorption systems. So taking into account all those things, all the different alternatives we looked at over the years of topography, the wetlands, the existing woodland area here, the, the wells want to be here because it, it, can, it can go right up near the wetland. It, can, it allows us to maintain all this existing vegetation close to the resource areas. So once you put that in place, then it's all right, where do this, where do these septic systems want to fit? And we can't be in the zone one radius. We wanted to push the development as close to 16 as we could. So that really left us this area and to meet the setbacks from 22, 20, 16, and, and the zone one and the, the wetlands really kind of forces you into a configuration similar to that. There's some there's some minor manipulations that can be made, but really talking about that area. Anybody else on the board? Hi, Bill. How are you? I see you're on. Uh, you're on mute. You gotta unmute yourself. <laughs> Everybody does. You gotta unmute yourself. Can you do it? No. No, on this. There you go. Yeah, sorry, Mike, guys. Uh, I seem to have developed a cold this afternoon. So a little bit out of kilter. Glad, um, glad to see you here. Um, yes. So you need to um, we, that we're having the the lack of uh, board members that can. Really you need to um, invoke the rule of necessity bill because you're in the butter. So I need you to state who you are, why you're in conflict, and that you're invoking the rule of necessity. Yeah, uh, William Ambrosino, uh, chair of the planning board. Uh, uh, I'm in a butter tip property, approximately probably uh, 200 feet away. Um, and I'm invoking the rule of necessity. Thank, thank you. You have any questions about this? I know you kind of jumped on late, but. No, I've been following it along um, and, uh, uh, you know, I, I Received a copy of the plans and stuff uh, they sent the other day, uh, and I reviewed it pretty well. Um, I particularly don't have any questions. I, I, I think the layout is good the way uh, they're accessing Route 16. I think it worked. So I don't have any uh, issue with it, but. Um, I obviously I didn't hear anybody's rebuttals previously, so I'm not sure if the, what the concerns would be, uh, if if there are any. But I, I think it's development the uh, the town of men is looking for. That's why we voted in the uh, bylaw. Yep. Sounds good. Um, I'm going to turn it over to the audience. I think everybody on the board has asked their questions for right now. Now that we don't have Jeff here with us. So once Jeff is here, we'll have probably a lot more questions or or a lot more answers for everybody as well. Uh, Brendan. Hello, uh, Brendan Chanel, uh, 16 Washington Street, uh, speaking as the bar. Um, the question I have is about the proximity of the setback to the wells. On, I know they're within the setback. Uh, last time this was in front of the board, there was an offer made to connect certain of the abutters to the water system. <coughs> <laughs> I believe, yeah. yeah, we hear the question, Damon. Is there any way to increase the volume to the... Come on, if you want to come up, speak into the microphone again. Thank you. Okay. Sorry about that, Mr. Chair. Um, Brendan Chanel, 16 Washington Street. Uh, I asked a question about the possibility of tying in some of the abutters to the water system, uh, specifically those that are close to the leaching fields. Um, it was presented last time this was in front of the board as an option. I was wondering if that was still on the table. 
I think we got an answer from. Let's see if I'm close enough to the mic yeah. over here. Uh, yeah, as far as I understand, the applicant still intends to take that into consideration. There is excess uh, volume in our withdrawal rate based on the development we're proposing today. So there's an opportunity to, to provide that uh, as appropriate. So I'm going to need you to submit that in writing when you're comfortable yep. with it and which houses. Uh, it's going to be dependent on the, the, the need. So we'll, also, we'll submit something in writing. That yeah, kind of we'll go from there. Because yeah. you're going to have to figure out how much water you have there before you're going to. And what the need is for it. Right. And, 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 the and if it gets to approval, you need, need to codify this somehow. We'll, we'll figure that out. Yeah. So the, the, way, the way we had left it last time um, was there is excess capacity in the wells. If there was reason or justification for an abutter to need to tie into the well, there would be an opportunity for a number of abutters to tie in and keep the, the, the withdrawal rate below our maximum. Okay. Where is the septic? Septic. Is here. Those two pieces there. Yeah. So how many abutters are close to it? Two. 16 and 22. All right. And one of them is going to be, you own one of them. Oh. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, technically that was yeah, yeah. Good, but okay. they're, they're part of the project. So 22, oh, well, 22 was 22 the final 16 deal. Are the, okay. Are the okay, yeah, they're close to the... Okay. All right. but, so they're yeah. the obvious choices. Yeah, and, and the systems are well in excess of the, the setback requirements under Title V. Right. But, but I understand the concern. Yeah, just the size of it. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, <laughs> oh, you did. Well, yeah, I can. yeah, no, no, yeah. Uh, uh, while I'm here, one more, one more question uh, regarding the screening features, uh, some of the vegetation. So, uh, assuming that's going to be maintained by the OHOA, if so something, one of the evergreen trees dies or falls over, will it be replaced, or is it just once it's there, it's it's? Yeah, I, I can't speak for the HOA down the line, but yeah, the the landscaping would be maintained. Can we put that as a condition of the project? We can. Um, within generally. Generally, the HOAs uh, develop their own board. I mean, in my history with them, they, and they manage that on their own through the, the HOA, um, you know, upkeep of the, the property comes through the HOA. But I think the barriers point, we can put something reasonable that um, they are warranted for a certain amount of years, but you can't. You yeah. can't go beyond reason. If a hurricane comes through or something. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if something falls over, that's their, their that's part of their maintenance right. program. HOA has like a standard. But if it dies because it there. wasn't in, um, planted properly or it's a yeah. bad tree, that's it's, different. It's, right. Right. Yeah, there's typically a one-year warranty yeah. for, for landscape planting. Sometimes there'll be a two-year warranty depending yeah. on yeah. where you're purchasing from. But, uh, if I may just jump back to the, the septic concern you mentioned. Sure. We, we did look at another alternative uh, about for this for this portion of the septic system, kind of rotating this piece to use a little bit more of this land and pull it a bit further away from 16. So so we've evaluated that; it appears feasible, and, and we're considering <laughs> submitting that as part of the revision. Pulling it back. Yeah, pulling it back a little further. To, to Brendan's point about the proximity, that just you know it's downgraded. It's it's well well above the setback, but this is kind of a dead zone here. So you know. In our eyes, it's a good use of the site to, to, if we can, if it does work with the Board of Health eventually, uh, pull this kind of this half of it down a little bit closer to the zone one, a little further away from the butter. That'll allow a little bit more screening, which is a benefit, uh, and it'll push the soil absorption system a little further away. Okay. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I guess just to continue to pull that thread a little bit, um, I'm just curious, how large are those systems? They're sized based on the Title V requirements. So we have specific sizing requirements for commercial in terms of gallon per days per square foot, and then specific sizing requirements for age restricted two bedroom homes. So there's a gallon per day design criteria. This, it's, so there's that. <laughs> All those things come into play, and, and the size of these systems are based on the soil testing we've done and the, the, the Title V calculations for wastewater disposal. Yeah, and, and I, I ask because that's that's been a concern all along. It's just the amount of water on the property. The, the driving range itself is at times it's not available for use because it's so wet. You sink into it, 
And then I even look at, you know, the test holes, the perp holes that were dug, you know, along the border of uh, 20 Washington. I mean, just a couple of weeks back, those test holes were filled with standing water for days. Where's the water going to go? Yeah, so this will, these are going to be raised systems to have the minimum separation required from the seasonal high groundwater. So we're going to have to go through a wastewater disposal system construction firm approval with the Board of Health and meet all the Title V criteria. The water is going to continue to go where it goes today, which is down towards the wetlands. This portion of the site is going to be elevated to meet those criteria. This portion of the site is also going to be slightly elevated to provide an adequate transition into the site from Route 16. So we've taken all of that into consideration for both the stormwater and sewer designs. But it is graded towards the towards the well site, but it's also graded towards 20 as well. Like I said, that whole area was primarily coming standing down water. Way. Yeah. Yeah, there's a finger behind 20 that kind of sticks out that's floodplain. So off of this wetland as well figure that comes in the 20. So that gets inundated. So I, I guess, I don't know, a lot of this will come down to the Board of Health. Board of Health will do all the inspections, yeah. Inspections and yeah. whatnot. But are there Design. Other, approval. you know, more, I don't know, cutting edge systems available with a smaller footprint or other options available if it doesn't. Yeah, that's all going to be part of the Board of Health yeah, that's not process, all, all part of their approval process. So because we're, and I don't want to get too far into the weeds here, but because we're within an interim wildlife protection area, so you've got a zone one and then there's a protection area beyond that, uh, we're in a nitrogen sensitive uh, area. So these septic systems have to follow some additional criteria under Title V. So we're going to have recirculated sand filters uh, in addition to your typical septic tanks, your grease traps. That provides some nitrogen reduction and a little bit better effluent for discharging into the groundwater because uh, it gets cycled through a sand media five, six, seven times before it goes out. So it like increases, increases the, the opportunity. It's all the more reason the Board of Health needs more time. Exactly. Yeah, we have a whole separate permitting process we're going to have to go yeah. through with them. So this is just basically to say here's, here's generally what the size is, here's where we intend to locate them. We're going to have to do a very detailed design, construction level design, and submit that to the Board of Health for their review and approval down the road. This is really about one step of a, a number of steps we're going to have to take both locally and at the state level. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Joyce Gilmore, 23 Hastings Street, um, Menden. Um, I'm just wondering uh, about the, the well uh, testing, uh, having uh, had to have a well on my property back in the day. We we had lovely um, just ten foot wells and and it was wonderful. And then they started salting the road and that changed everything. So um, when we had to put a well in, it was very deep. And I'm just wondering, have you done some testing at all? So the pump test we're going to run. We'll be drilling these two wells, right? Okay. And then running a five-day pump test. Right. Uh, we're expecting to drill about 300 feet. I would say you may have to go to more. four. Yeah, we, we've got yeah. four targeted, just, but we're hoping for just three. Just saying. But there's a there's a whole DEP process that we right. have to go yeah. through. Right. Yeah. I I, just, I just wondered if. Yeah. You know, just. Yeah, just we're to, in the three to four hundred foot range. Just terms. to let you know uh, what that. what was yeah what's happening because having been there. And done that. Yep. <laughs> so, okay. I, I just wanted to, yeah, and I, I'm on the board of health, so I will also be watching that too. So, thanks. Great. Yeah. Wait, uh, Thank you so if much. If all things are normal, along normal, when will you be submitted to the board of health? All times. That's a great question. So, we go through the local process with the planning board, ideally, exit this with a special permit. At that point, will still likely be going through the NEPA process at the state level. Um, that will be drawn out for a bit because of the need for a DEP permit for the wells and a DOT permit for uh, the routes, the, the access Section 16, along Route yeah. 16. So that's an un, that's really an unknown duration okay. how long that NEPA process, but coming out of that, we'll be in a position where DEP is ready to approve the wells and DOT is ready to improve the offsite infrastructure improvements for the project. Once we have those, and probably while we're in the NEPA process, kind of where we're like, okay, it's coming, 
will be submitting to the okay. Board of Health. So I'd, I would hope that's going to happen in 2024. Sounds good. Thank you. 2024. That's what he said. All right. So we're not we're not in any rush here. I, I mean, I see you want to get moving, but well, if we can't do much because if the, you know, the well situation might change your design. No, we'll have to come back if that's the case. Right. This until we have this approval from this board. We're in a bit yeah. of a predicament yeah. at the state level. Uh, no. and, uh, keep in mind that the board has a time period to act. We can't worry about what all these other boards are doing. We we got to act on the plan and the special permit in this time period that we're allowed. So we need to keep the constraint of the um, of the review of the the public hearing around that. And you know, if he's got to keep in mind, even if we approve a, a plan, he's still got to meet all other requirements with all other boards and committees. So it doesn't give them any go ahead. But we have a certain amount of days to act on it, unless they relieve those days. Okay. And and the, the benefit here is you guys have a process in place that if going through the state process with DOT or DEP, something changes, we have to come back to, to the board and either ask for an administrative approval, like if the well changes yeah. by five feet, or an, a project change, so an yeah. amendment of the. Of the uh, thank you. Bob, I know you had a question earlier. Do you? I do. Um, come on up. I'll come up. Bob Sweet, 50 Milford Street, Mendon, Mass. A um, couple of questions, if you can indulge me. First one, I know you said that there was a second egress. Does the second egress come on to Route 16? Yes. Can you show me where it comes in? Yeah. So the primary access and egress is at the signalized intersection with Millville Road here. The secondary access and egress is a right in, right out. So if you're going westbound on the 16 towards the site, you can make it right in. Yeah. If you intend to continue going westbound or you just want to get to the signal and take okay, a Okay, so it keeps you on one side of the road. You can't, you are not going to be able to take a left out of here. Okay. You have to go to the lights. Yeah, you got to go to the lights. So if you want to make a left out of this development, you're going here to make that left. I should add, we have our traffic engineer looking at this. He's not doing it in depth like he did the last time because most of the data is already collected, but he is looking at it. We don't really know what the DOTs exactly how they're going to put He'll be together. discussing that with them. Yes, yes. exactly. Yes, D DOT will have the final say on any exactly. improvements on their corridor. So really, <laughs> it's going to come down to what they want. Right. Uh, yeah. you know, we're going to present what we think is appropriate, and then we're going to go through that process with them during, during the MEPA uh, review, and then subsequently their access permit review. Great. Thank you. Well, hopefully... The next time we get together, you know, Jeff will be here and we'll have some, you know, a, some input. Yeah, that would be great. Hopefully Go ahead, sir. Yeah, is he done? Is he done? Are you done? I, I have several questions. If somebody wants to jump in in between. No, well, fine. go ahead. Let's get them all, wrap them up. Okay. So I live on Route 16 and I, I'm in favor of commercial. Route 16 is commercial. I have no problem with that. But this is a question for the planning board is the traffic from from North Street backs up past my house and I'm almost at the top of the hill from coming down and coming back up. What's all of this extra traffic going to do for that? Is that something that you have taken into consideration? Question from me or the board? Well, no, well I, I think that what's going to happen is that traffic is going to stop there and buy groceries on the way home. A lot of it has to do with the timing of the lights. I don't think there'll be any extra traffic. No, and that's, 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 yeah, yeah, I mean, exactly. North Street right now backs traffic, house, traffic up lights. past my house. I would mention that the, we're looking at that, uh, that intersection, the state's working on this intersection right here, right now. Right. So I know that's, Turn that's there. in the process along with right. this. Four light. of them are going to yeah. be, I know that. Then yeah. there's going to be one at the top. Yeah, they do. What's but the state's to it? I mean, if you've seen the state's plan, there's going to be left and right turn lanes. It's going to change dramatically the traffic at that intersection, Bob. Um, unfortunately, other than our, our traffic study that we're doing for this project, which our, um, you know, our, uh, our representative will go over 
well, let me report back to the board what he thinks. But that's a state road, and we're relying on uh, the Mass DOT to come in and correct that road, which they're working on now. So eventually the problem will get solved. It's just a matter of um, when that problem gets solved. Two-lane road would be, you know, four-lane road would be a, a really good area to have that, or at least a, a three-lane where you have a turn lane in the center. That's a Yeah, that's well, I think brilliant. we're getting off, a little off topic. I, I mean, I don't want to get off this project we're talking about tonight, discussing intersection at uh, you know, Dab. Um, those, uh, you know, our traffic uh, representative for the town will tell us what he thinks. And uh, but the, the updates to the road to Route 16 are coming. And it, it, the plan I saw had additional turn lanes at North Ave. Okay. Um, so one other question. Is any of that in the 25-foot no disturb zone for conservation? Any of the work down here? Yes. Just the two wellheads. Is there any way to move it out of the 25 foot no disturb? The EP actually prefers it to be closer to the wellhead. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Sure. Sir. Sir. I'm to Washington. Uh, I have a couple of concerns. Um, privacy. I know you guys have changed the. Um, so I'm I'm the one on the left, right, right there. Yeah. yeah. I had John in my backyard one day when he was surveying the land and showed him how my back property's raised and I'll be like on a stage back there. So he said he put up a fence because they're gonna have people walking by all the time and the dogs will be barking all the time and flipping out. So um, I know you've got a big green thing there, but it's not that thick, you know, it's, right here. Yeah. let me just show you. <laughs> okay, yeah, so. My uh, my septic field comes back to about here. It's raised. So he said from my fence. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right here. Yeah. Comes back to about here. I'd say my septic. I have a fence that ends right here. It's a six foot. He said he put an eight foot up here because with people walking down these trails, my dogs are just gonna flip out. He also said there'd be some ranting. Now one other thing. This is going to be on this system, is that correct? No, no. this one will be... The All right, well, when they, when they bought this, they there was a truck back there, and I think they broke pipes because now the septic's bubbling up and coming between these two properties because they buried a trailer over here uh, by a trench where the water's supposed to drain. But now that they buried a trailer, it's all it's all draining this way to my property down into my land now. I used to drain down here. Buried trail. So I was just wondering if maybe that could get corrected. Take the trailer out and we do French and make sure the septic's correct. Yeah, they're gonna have fence. <laughs> Those are my concerns. Yeah, so the, with the with the improvements at home, I expect the board of health then be looking for the septic system and apply with pipe apply. Okay. Okay. And then of course the water I'm very concerned about. Yep. Um, yep. Uh, as well, being hooked up to that. John's here, you have any problem with fence? Sounds like you guys. No, that we already agreed. Yeah, yeah. 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 Ye
we're proposing 35 at a density of 2.8 units per acre. So it's a less dense. But, but the commercial allowed. is a commercial a shrank. Great yeah, shrank. Yeah. Commercial is you want to speak to that? Far reduced. So we were around 67,000 square feet for the commercial component. We're down to a little over 41,000. So um, is there a need to have it that dense? Is it all about somebody making money? Is that what the it's the bylaw? That's what that's what they, they allow you to yeah, do. It meets so if, you're, by but if, you're, if you're allowed to do it, there's one thing, but should you do it? Well, if you're allowed to do it and you can you have the land to, 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 to withstand the septic system and you have the land to do the well and everything, you know, including one of those is the one of the 30, would you say 35? 35. Yeah. And one of those is the house that's existing on Washington Street, correct? Right. No, right. Yeah. Two of them. So that so you yeah. so you have the two or three? Yeah. Well, the barn style will be a Oh, and the barn. Okay. So you have three that are three that are on Washington Street that Washington Street that are already there. Right. And then so you now you're down to thirty you know, thirty two. So you're gonna make a unit of the barn? Yes. Is, is that is that well if if there is a, if they have enough land and enough pro to do what they can do on the on on the land on the property then yes, yes they, they, they yeah. can we can't we can't stop them so. but I, I if i can i think the one of the questions she had was is there a need and i've been involved with affordable housing and housing since i've been in mendon which is believe it or not almost three years and we had a meeting today and there is an extreme need for over 55 housing there is none there is no, really, there's the uh, housing authority complex. You don't have it. And we don't allow multifamily housing in Mendon, except for this new zoning. And it passed overwhelmingly at town meeting. So I think it was, the need has been demonstrated. And people are being priced out of Mendon is what we've heard. And we've, we're learning that day by day. What did you live, say? People can't afford to live here anymore. People are being priced out and need to move out of town, even though they don't want to. Okay. Well, yeah, I don't want to answer your question yeah. about is there a need. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the the need. You want to get off topic. So, so if somebody has five, they say they have four children and they all grew up. Right. So now they have a five bedroom house. Right. And they can't afford the taxes and they can't afford to live, but they want to stay in Mendon yeah. because they grew up here. Right. So now they can go live in an over 55 community, you know, smaller house and still be able to live their, their retirement out or they'll live their life out. Right. And still stay in the town of Mendon, which they love. Okay. So that's what they're trying. We don't. We've been trying to put these yeah. up for years, and we can never get. Nobody ever wants them anywhere. We finally have a place. Well, that's kind of. I'm not saying. I'm not. I'm not saying you should. I think. Have I them. think we're getting off scope here, guys. Um, the applicant has a right to utilize the bylaw as we we did it. If he sees fit to utilize. The bylaw and it allows for this amount of housing. The board doesn't have the authority to tell them it can't. So, Mrs. Murphy. So, so could I ask why was it? Why did he only want to do 27 before, and now he wants to do 35? Um, that's because we had a we had a huge resident. We had the supermarket was pushed back in. We yeah. had another huge yeah okay building here. Yeah. And these units got spread all through here. So this is a plan that I worked out with the abutters to leave this space in here all open and only disturb really the fields that are already cleared. Yeah. We have to clear just a little bit past the wall just for backyards, but other than that, we're leaving the woods the way they are. So, but you're you're only going to have one means of egress and e. Correct. Well, I, I've checked with the fire chief if he's here. Yeah. Um, and that's okay. Road, he's fine with it. Before we were going to go out to Washington Street, yeah. we got a lot of pushback on right. the entrance to Washington Street. Right. So we totally eliminated the Washington Street exit, even as an emergency access. He said we didn't need it. Okay. And w one other thing is, and I, I know you talked about water, and I couldn't hear you, but I didn't understand. Um, I'm on seven, and I get my. Um, water from at the creek that runs at an angle to your site it, am i going to have a problem no we're, we're, we're digging deep wells way over here right and but for the regular for the people that already live on washington yeah that, we've had we've had a um we had a peer review a hydraulic study yeah hydrology study when we were here the last time an external peer review and they saw no problems 
so there won't be any problems getting that water. Okay, that, all right. That's we have to do a very elaborate pump test, as Matt can yeah. tell you. They got to make sure they have plenty so of water, and that's have, that has to that has to pass before we can even move forward. Uh, and you had um, roundabouts before. Yeah. Yeah. The town was against. Well, the people oh, yeah. in the town were against that. The board was for it, so we went to a light because it was less intrusive than a lot of the members of the public when we met with the. Um, when that, we met with the uh, abatis and stuff, wanted a light, not a roundabout. And that has a lot to do with mass DOT yes. too. I mean, it's you know, mass DOT kind of dictates what go, what's going to happen out on Route 16. Yeah. You know, we they can work with them as best as they can. Right. But at the end of the day, you know, you're you're at their mercy. Right. Yeah. They may decide. Well, yeah. I guess the, the one thing that was raised before was that coming up that hill, right? The, uh, See, get to Washington Street, and then you're going to have a light right there. You don't think that's going right. to pose a problem? It, I, I guess that's mass DOT is what again, you know, they what it might be a little bit better because now you're going to come out. We're on the experts, the, they're yeah, have one at Hasbro Avenue too. One there, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to have three lights in a short little. Period. What are you going to have a light at at the end of Washington? No, it's no, at the end of Maple. They may put one at the end of Washington. They may. They, there, there, there is talk of it. One of the problems. There is going to be one in Washington. Well, they, they're not sure. There is talk about okay, that, but okay. that has nothing to do with. It. Actually, we're know. getting off the. We're getting off. Yeah. The, yeah. So. Well, uh, yeah. I guess in general, my comments are about density. Yep. Right. And can that area handle the amount of density? I'm not against 55 <laughs> and over, but. I, yeah, I you think know, that he's that, got that, other sites he well, could I think use. Traffic now just passes through town. Nobody stops. Right now we'll get now a little bang money. money. I, now they're stopping. And, and that's nice. why we pay, we paid a peer reviewer um, okay. to re review representing the town, not the the applicant. They a peer traffic uh, peer reviewer to an, analyze that for us. And at the next. And they and they said fine. They said okay. Not yet. They okay. they haven't uh, finished. Yeah. They passed the first one. Right. But yeah. It's still reviewing this one. They passed it based on the design they had originally. Yeah, so you're still kind of a little in the process of figuring out. And this is out? a lot smaller than the, the commercial correct. base is a lot smaller on this plan than it was that, that already had passed. Okay. So, but at the end of the our our town, the town's engineer is going to, you know, dissect this plan. So if there's anything that comes up, we're going to it's going to be addressed. And okay. We will. At, there's going to be multiple meetings that we're going to be here. Will, will the public be able? Oh yes, yeah. You're more than every meeting every now meeting is, until you know, until you until figure it all out until it's approved. Yeah. They'll announce before we leave yeah. when the next when meeting. The next, well, okay. Yeah. I I am a little concerned about the density, living on Washington. Like I said, we go ahead, John. Yeah, so that's specifically why, because that was concerns about everybody the first time through. Yeah. That's specifically why we're not taking any traffic now out on Washington. Yeah, yeah. So we have screening between, we're leaving the natural trees. We're not cutting any trees behind 12 Washington. We have screening all through there that you won't probably be able to see the units once it's grown in from Washington Street. Um, I, I, you know, it's, it's, so the whole focus is going to be out on 16. On 16, right. yeah, so which is the more commercial yeah, yeah, yeah. area of the town. It's across yeah. from the other plaza. Yeah. So that's why we went through all this. We, yeah. I mean, I met with the abutters multiple times um, to come up with a plan that didn't impact Washington. Right, right, right. Well, the way the store is, I don't know how much you're going to see. I'm sorry? Well, the way the store is located, I don't know how much you're going to see from 16 as far as the residential site goes. Mm -hmm. Oh, the development in the back? Yeah. See the road. Yeah, so we got a landscape from the store to the residential, landscape from Washington to the residential, the store in front of it, and then at the other small retail space next to it. So you're going to see very little. Uh, we're going we're gonna to have a, many meetings here. So, I mean, if there's any anything that has to get done, I mean, any quick questions about something, other than that, we should wait till our engineer you know, comes back and he'll he'll address any questions sure. that or you know, John or the applicant. What go ahead, Eric, you wanna you got a quick one? Yeah, I got two quick ones. Like okay. Really quick. Yep. Thanks. Uh, Eric Hodge, three Bates Street. Um Jack, since you'd mentioned affordable housing, um saw in the bylaw that the expectation is ten percent of the units okay. are. 
So does that mean four of these units are going to be horrible? OK, they'll have to be registered and certified by the state. OK, that was one. See, told you quick. Um, <laughs> number two, um, I was just curious if the traffic impact assessment accounted for the crosswalk and foot traffic that we talked about earlier. So my understanding with the, the Arma district is that we want it to be walkable, so we're encouraging residents to, to walk about the area with 16 being pretty busy, you know, putting in a you know crosswalk, you know, and a, a walk light and whatnot. I'm curious if that's accounted for. They are definitely looking at it. That's what I can tell you. I haven't seen anything back from them. I gave them the plans whenever we got them and uh, they gave me a scope and that is in there to look at that intersection and they'll look at the crosswalks. Okay. I just did another project uh, on Plains and Hartford East about Oh, right. crosswalks they're very good they're very good and they'll actually have a discussion with mass dot about this even though john's right mass dot will do what they want but i think they'll listen they'll yeah listen. yeah they, they tend to listen especially if the planning board gets involved in right, it. right they'll listen to the planning board more than they'll listen to the <laughs> yeah i think yeah. if everybody works together we'll pub we'll right if, everything, if it does all work out i think mm. it'll be a nice little uh nice little asset for the town yeah, what, this whole project? Well, the grocery stores, I think, is pretty nice, right? <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what, store. two years ago, whenever this first came in, a lot of people talked to me about the grocery store. I talked but, to them, don't we? Everybody. Uh, but, but in a positive? Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. 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 I, mean, I, I mean, I would rather yeah, go to Menden, go they down the street. They didn't necessarily like shopping. all the other stuff, but that's gone now. Yeah, and, but um, I think that, I mean, let's... I think if there's nobody else has quick. any Come. more questions, I think Thank we should you. just move along until the next meeting, and then maybe we'll have sure. some answers. Any of your questions might be answered, you know, right in the meeting. Sure. Thank you. What's Thank you for your time. Meeting, I'm sorry. When's our next meeting? You want to go April. a week or two? I mean, two April. or four. Um, Jeff, Jeff hasn't replied yet. He's sick. Oh. He hasn't. Mm -hmm. I think probably best is I, I think four because we're going to want to have. I agree. We'll do all the revisions. I have some revisions about his ass. Is that okay? It? You'll put you'll, you'll put that fence. Maybe just get the yep, yep. all that little things. will be on the plan, so there won't be any questions. Okay. Okay. It's the twenty yeah. second of April. Of April at six. What we'll do is we'll take when we receive peer review comments, we'll take peer review comments, the butter comments, and we'll incorporate all those into you a revised concept comments. that was submitted to the board. Bill, you have any issues with April 22nd? Uh, no, I'm just looking at my schedule. Uh, I should be good for April 22nd. Okay. What do you want to do? Make a motion to next meeting April 22nd. Six. Second. Oh, April 6th? Oh. oh, at 6. Oh, yeah, at 6. At 6. At six. All, right. all in Second. favor? Yeah. All right. Hi. Bill and Rosina, why? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so. So the 22nd, 6 p.m. Yep. Okay. Yes, I'll see um, you guys. Thank you very much, everyone. Where? Thank you. Thank uh, you. You're lucky, Jeff. Nice job. Thank you. Uh, Could you send? We got a discussion. So we're not, you. Why not the I want to make sure John Nenar gets all the forward, comments so. from John Dudley, from Board of Health, from meeting. Isabella. We we meet the first or the third? I don't know. I guess that's this is the, the thing first. Thing. Yeah. With the, what? Oh, maybe there might be a holiday. Is there a holiday? Oh, there? wait a minute, Gail. It's not, it's not, it's not on my calendar. Oh, school vacation. Oh, it's because the 15th is a holiday. Oh, yeah, it is. The That's why. Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, that, it is. Actually. It's not a holiday. That's a holiday. We have a selection with a question. Uh, good. What's the holiday? Well, I mean, we can. Is it possible to get this, these plans up to to the town though. website? So yeah. I think so. Yeah, I think they're already on there. Uh, oh, cool. Yeah. Two days ago, they were. I don't have this one that they showed today. Yeah. I didn't get that one. Next. Hey, Mr. Max, we'll get that. All right. We'll get that. You're right. Discussion? Yes. Yeah. You're in the hot seat all night, buddy. That's a no. Yeah, right. Yeah, you think this is easy for you? All right. Um, this is a discussion with John and not for 4549 Uxbridge Road, Stormwater. Yes, so, um, so on the 7th, December 17th, let me give you a little history. The 7th, hey, you want, Jimmy, grab a mic. Yeah, I'm gonna just, yeah, where is that? 
On December 17th, we had a five inch rain event up there um, at 4549 Oxbridge Road, which is a steep hill. We're blasting. Um, we're not blasting, we're hammering ledge, we're processing ledge. So at that time, um, we had a ton of um, additional erosion control and fence. Besides what was called for on the plan, which was along the border, sill fence and waddles, we had a second row of sill fence and waddles um, in front of that, that one. We had uh, five plunge pools going up. We had the area where the, the basin is going to be, the underground basin is going to be all chipped out and we had that serving as a temporary basin in front of the and then we had a pipe going underneath so we could get um, equipment across to the front of the site. Um, during that storm event, it was five inches in a couple hours. Um, everything, the basin filled up, it, the pipe filled up, the plunge pools filled up, the water raised so high that it overflowed the sill fence. The sill fence held because we had two rows and two rows of uh, bales, but um, the sill fence flew, flowed over the top of the sill fence and we have silt in the lower wetland area. Um, Conservation Commission issued an enforcement order for us to come in and come up with a restoration plan for the lower wetlands. So at that time, um, DEP, after that storm, was out on the site, saw all the controls we had in, had no problem with the site. They came back two weeks later after it kind of dried out. We added two more plunge pools and we added 30 flock locks, which helped the silt settle out of the water so it goes into the wetlands clean. Um, we added that into the temporary erosion control. Um, once that was done, DEP came back out. They found the site was good. There was nothing else we could do. Um, the same time that we, after that rain, we started SWIP inspections every two weeks and after every rainstorm of a half an inch or more. So since that time, I think we've had seven or eight SWIP inspections that had has found no deficiencies on the site. So the problem at conservation is during our original um, meetings, there is an access road that we built up like this and around that comes out near the upper building so that we could haul material up here, process it, and bring it out through the road here. We haven't had sent any material off site because all the crushed stone that we've been, almost 15,000 tons of three inch stone that we've using, we're using on the site. So we basically have dug out all the soil in the lower section and replaced it with stone, clean stone. So we wouldn't get any more silt coming down. Um, this is the section in here that we're currently processing everything. We have a, a crusher and a, a screener up there. I think they've removed the screener and the crusher is getting removed tomorrow. This is, was, so this was caught. I have a plan here from an email to Jeff Walsh. Uh, it was on uh, 719, and this was a revision of page three of the original plans, because at that time he noticed that this area was cut, and in our drainage report we didn't have that as being cut. So this plan was revised on uh, on the original set on 73019, stamped on 8719, showing the areas that were cut. At that time we got in trouble from DEP, so the project got held up for two years. Um, not, not from any much the cut area because of the stream down here that connects to the lower section. So it, over those two years, we rebuilt the stream and diverted it around the building. After the two years, and DEP was fine with what we did. We restored some uh, buffer area in here. We came back, we went to conservation, and we got a water of a condition issue. So the problem is conservation is saying that the stormwater is not right because of this temporary disturbance up here. But this, this is a temporary disturbance. The trees were already cut. We have leveled it, we have grubbed it and leveled it off and smoothed it out. But we've, we're already starting to restore this area. They started this week, they'll be done the middle of next week, and we're hydro seeding the end of the following week. So we're hydro seeding with a conservation mix. In HydroCAD, um, things, are, things like runoff and stuff are based on a, a coefficient number. So if you have a wooded area like this, the coefficient is 55. The higher the co coefficient, the more runoff you get. If you have loom and grass, it's 61, slightly higher. What we're doing here is a conservation mix of soils that we're replacing. It was a, a terrible soil, the beet type, that didn't really soak into the ground. We're replacing the soil here with a good 
uh, conservation mix that is going to absorb the soil, and we're going to be spraying it with a conservation mix seed, which is a mixture of um, weeds, grass, shrubs, you know, wildflowers. Yeah, not, no, we're not using the wildflower. Oh, yeah. No, it's like a branchy woody mix. Okay, sure. That has a, a coefficient of 48, lower than both grass and forest. So this area restored here will get less runoff than, um, than what it was originally. So the problem, so even during all the heavy rain rainstorms, we've never had any silt release from this area up here. There's been no silt in the upper wetland, no silt in the stream. Um, what happened was this was all, the silt we got from the bottom was all from the stream running down and where we cut into the bank to do the detention base and that soil eroded. It was a very fine silt. It was hard to get out of the thing. We used flock blocks to get it out, but we finally got it all squared away. Um, um, so, you know, they're saying that this wasn't taken into account in the drainage calcs, but it's temporary disturbance. Um, it's outside of the 100 foot buffer. That's why they kicked it to you. So I could come in and explain what we did. Um, it was always our impression when I was in front of the board that this whole road was going to come around and we were going to process the material in this area. The trees were already cut. We didn't cut any more trees to do this. They were all cut. Um, we actually leveled it off so it's, the slopes on is steep so you get a more time of concentration for the water to grow in the ground. They're saying it's a change in the plan. The plan hasn't changed. This parking lot's the same, the drainage structures are the same, the detention basin is the same. There's no change in the final outcome. So the final outcome is still based on impervious area, has the same amount of impervious that we were in front of the board originally as it is when we're going to finish the project. David. Okay. What did, uh, what did um, Jeff, <clears throat> when he commented, and you must have uh, aligned with what he was looking for, he was aware that those trees were gone, correct? Yeah, so this was on 719. So I found an old, I, I forwarded the email, Bill. I found an old email, email from the engineer at the time, Bob Fox, and to Jeff Walsh, sending him this plan that this was one of the comments that he noticed when he was on a sidewalk out there because he was reviewing it, these trees were cleared and we redid the existing conditions plan to the to show that the trees were cut there. Okay. Uh, and then we were under no restrictions up here from conservation or DEP. You can see these dock areas. That was the area that they cut into the, the tree clear cut into the buffer because he pulled 100 feet, but it's up a slope like this. So he had cut some trees in the buffer. So that those are the areas we couldn't um, touch, which we didn't. So when we we staked the area that we were going to be using, we came 125 feet from all the wetlands, and we staked the limit a limit that we were going to, you know, use to store our material, crush the ledge, um, you know, store the rock for the site down the bottom. And John, and, and this was approved at conservation. They were aware that the trees weren't there. Yes, they were. That was yeah, it was approved two years after the three years almost after the trees were cut. So they were 100% aware that the trees had been cut. That was all done through DEP, and DEP had already signed off on our remediation. So I think uh, I think at this point, um, since Jeff has not been available, and obviously the board needs direction from Jeff, um, yeah, I think to move pieces. forward with this, I, I'd like Jeff to review the plan, um, obviously, and go over what you know what the intention is after um you know after you reclamate after you put the, the seed down and stuff and see what jeff's uh opinion is at that point in time well okay i, I mean uh, go, ahead, go ahead jack i want to I question i'll let you go i agree you. with uh, john didn't say anything i i hadn't heard before except that at least my conversations with the agent, he's the only person I've talked to from the conservation, and the email she sent me, she's, she doesn't know. I know you believe, it, and we, she doesn't know whether this is an alteration of your 2019 stormwater permit. And they're not sure, and it's out of their jurisdiction. Yeah, so, so you got to appreciate when one commission or one board gets an email letter from another board, we have to honor that and, and pursue it. It's that's yeah, I don't common I don't, etiquette. No, we're not we're not against that. I just so but I just want to be. Oh, hold on, everybody. Hold on. Everybody's, 
Go ahead, Bill. It, yeah, it's, this is very simple. All we're going to do is look to support the CONCOM, but we'll leave that result to our engineer who represents the planning. Um, we can't reopen a public hearing based on this. We can't do anything of, of such sort. Um, we can't rely on engineering from the, the CONCOM, although I think Jeff is CONCOM engineer too, but um, we are, we'll wait until Jeff, have a review with the intention of what they, I mean, the projects, the work's already been done. So there's nothing we can back up now. So we'll have Jeff take a look at it based on them reclamating that area. Think, see if Jeff thinks it's enough. And if it is, there shouldn't be any problems going forward. If it isn't, Jeff will let us know. Yes, I had a question. Yeah, so one second. Just to boil this down to its most basic elements, there's a, there's a track record. Of Jay, could you talk into the microphone? Yeah. yeah it, just boiling this down to its most simplistic elements, there's been issues with the property. And even if they've been remediated, once those rem remediation measures are removed, at what point going forward, we still don't know how it's going to hold up. So the ask is just to get the perspective of the uh, the expert, the engineer, before we move forward. Is that what's in front of us? Yeah. yeah. And, and, yeah. and unfortunately, Jeff was prepared to be here, and he would have preliminary answers, but he's sick. I just would like to add something. So right now, since this, since that release happened, the stream's been diverted, it's been piped, so it, the clean water is no longer mixing with any soil. It's piped all the way to um, where the crossing is, and it's dumping into an area that hasn't been disturbed before it goes into the wets. Um, so all the clean water on the site is clean, it's coming down the stream. Uh, we're not getting any silt, all the water coming everywhere is clear. We've used about 15 rolls, 500 foot rolls of Marathi filter fabric. We've done berms of uh, three quarter inch crust stone wrapped in filter fabric with three inch stone on, on top of it at all the edges of all the wetlands to filter any water that goes through because the silt was so fine that the silt fence wasn't really working. Um, so there's been, I welcome Jeff to come and see this. Uh, uh, quick, so, but the, what, what we're trying to get to is that the plan has not been changed by everything that you've done up there has been done according to plan. Okay, so Jeff needs to just look at this and make sure that he took into consideration the land up on the top of the hill. He took that into consideration for his stormwater management. But right? what? Basically, it. This is a temporary. It's a temporary disturbance. Correct. Pre and post, right? right? So the pre and posts are going to work because it's the same thing at the end. Actually, it gets a little bit better with what we're doing up there. So, no. so I fun. guess that I think it shouldn't be an issue. But, just, but us telling the conservation and the engineer telling the conservation is two different things. Yep. Yeah. Um, can I just ask a question? Yeah. Now, can you come on? Uh, what is the final plan? What, what, what are you doing up there? What, what, we're just doing a parking lot. We're doing a parking lot at the bottom. At the bottom building for a sign entrance with a new curb cut, we're closing up the steep curb cut that goes up to the lower buildings, and um, and we're doing the first wetland crossing. And eventually, where that access road comes up, we're going to be doing something at the top. This is another over 55 overlay zone, so we plan on doing some over 55 housing. Okay, that's what I'm talking Yeah, so that's the future. We haven't okay. submitted that yet. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm working on that as we okay. speak, so that'll be coming down the road. Okay. All right. Um, any other questions, Bob? Yes, I'm sorry, sir. Bob Sweet, 50 Milford Street. Uh, just one question, John. Yeah. Um, has the the grade changed at the top of the hill? Yeah. It's, so there's. You can see right here. There was a, a big ledge now here and a big ledge now here that have been flattened. So that's the only thing that's been done. Um, and that was that was like clean ledge, and this was clean ledge. So those now are going to be covered with soil, so that's even more more impervious. Than it's going to be. And out of the buffer zone. What yeah, is? And out of the buffer zone. We haven't done any work. Okay. Close. What is the depth of the soil that you're going to replace on top? Because if you're breaking all the ledge up there, now you're right on top of rock, right? Yeah, it's all ledge. 
So, so how, how deep are you going to go with soil? We'll probably do four inches of soil. Four inches? Yeah, of okay. conservation. Roots are going to, tree That's, roots are going to. There was trees growing on the ledge up there and no soil. <laughs> Literally cracks in the ledge. Okay. So we don't plan on having trees grow back in this area. This is going to be brush. Local. Now, is that temporary until you start the over 50 Absolutely. housing? And then that'll all be ripped up again? Yeah. Thank you, Bob. So yeah, John, that's yeah. that's kind of what I'm getting at. Is yeah. it, I don't know what measures you've taken are temporary or permanent, but yeah. based on what work is going to be done, are the measures that whatever was put forth for stormwater meant are they significant enough for the end state, and is that what they're looking at? Yeah. So absolutely. So the the remediation measures, you know, the restoration of this area is going to be done full, just like it was going to stay forever. Because we don't know if we're going to get get through with our our next project there or when we're going to get to it. You're going to make so, it stable. Yeah, it's going to be totally stable. We're using a real heavy tackifier on the conservation mix when they hydro seed this area to stabilize everything till it grows. Gotcha. Come on up. How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Uh, Peter Lyman, 66 Ux Uxbridge Road. I'm a butter across the street from the project. So. Uh, You've been across and seen all the collection of water in Karen's yard in between our yards. Yeah. I'm right next to her there. So it's been rainy, right? It's been rainy since last summer, and but also you've removed a bunch of trees across the road. So have you or the engineers uh, decided or looked at this and said that this is like a temporary state or? No, so so right now we're not done. So I know that. So right. um, the you know the underground basin's not in, the drainage structure's not yep. in. Right. So this is we're kind of you know we're <coughs> so far uh, further along than we were when mm -hmm. December seventeenth. Um, we're all getting really good clear runoff now. We're not getting anywhere near as much. Number two, um, and it, it, the site's just in really good shape right now. Um, I know you went through hell with the hammering. Yes. Um, we have, I, I've talked to everybody, I've talked to your wife and Karen many times. Um, I, I know there was a big uh, puddle in her yacht after that December 17th storm. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming it's been better lately during the rainstorms. I think that was the worst one. We had another three inch rainstorm. We had no release of silt or anything in the three inch storm because we were so much further along with the site. Um, that detention area now is functioning like a detention area because all the all the stone is in there so it's holding back that water now it's not letting it just run off like it was before mm -hmm. so I, I i don't foresee you guys having any more problems for it yeah it just seems like the water we have there now we haven't seen before you know i have water between my yard and hers where it's never been wet before it's a low area there yeah so uh, I, I her driveway fills up in that one think, area after every rainstorm and it's i think we've had a lot more rain i, I understand that so and that could be a landscaping like, issue on her property yeah, I, I don't there's nothing there's nothing coming off our site that we get across the street to your side i think that really what needs to happen is let, let the town's engineer he's going to take a look at it he'll, maybe he'll go do a site walk and let's good. just get everything. Let let him yeah. let the expert tell us what's going on. Yeah, that's you know? fine. I, I do know that in that big storm, December mm -hmm. December seventeenth, I went over and, and yeah. looked at Karen's lot, and there was water coming up through the right. drain manhole. But it was right. the same thing throughout the state. Right. Well, Everybody and that that's been an ongoing thing yeah. for, for years yes. because when the water at the that that pipe goes into the lake. When the water on the lake is higher than the pipe, there's no way, no place for the water to go. You can silt it up. Yes. It's so I mean, that, that's the that's not something new. And that's I still have the offer out there. If the lake association wants to permit us cleaning that out, I'll get the equipment over there and the manpower. To clean it out. Okay. I've said that since day one of this project because we went and looked at that pipe from day one and it was already silted. It was about an inch of the pipe left that was shown. That's it. Thank you. So that, that's a that's a problem too. Yeah. All right. We're gonna have a lot of other stuff to. Uh, yeah. We're gonna have. Hold on. One second. Well, I think first of all, we we get Jeff. We get exactly. Jeff up. We'll look at it. Get his review, and then we'll move forward from there. I got one. Uh, Kathy is online. Let me just get a quick question from her. Ahead, Hi, Jamie. Hi. Hey. Thank you. Um, Catherine Hackinson, 25 Washington Street. Um, I have a question. Are there any plans for blasting? Where? 
where they're working. She's talking about the new project. Are you talking at the grocery store or, or on Route 16? No, no, no she's I'm talking, talking about, about 45. Oh, no, I'm there is. 45. Are you, are you blasting over there? Yes, we, we, we can't get that front knob to, to break, so we're in front of Mass DOT trying to get a blasting permit. Right? So out by the road, they may be doing a little bit at, the, at, at this time. But nothing, they haven't heard anything yet. So we, we may okay, get so Seventy-five percent project. You have to talk into this microphone, John. Oh. She can't hear you. Kathy, we've got about seventy-five percent of the project done. There's twenty-five percent that the rock is too hard to break hydraulically, so we we we've been meeting with blasters and Mass DOT to get a permit for that front section. Okay, and so I guess I have concerns, you know, because my daughter is living across from there and just built a brand new home. And so, of course, where you have concerns about the well that we just uh, drilled, the new foundation that was just put in, all the, um, you know, they, they spent a lot of money with all the extra um, insulation, the whole new process of insulating a house. And um, will there be any inspections done um, before blasting to make, you know, so that if there is something that happens, um, that we have, um, I guess, recourse. Um, yes, the blasting, the blasting company will be doing uh, blasting surveys of foundations and pitches inside the houses or the walls and stuff like that on all the properties within 500 feet of the blast. And I will be sending out letters to all the direct abutters um, and, across, and across the street. So that, that's a direct abutter and about, it, about um, testing well water. Before it's also the blast. permitted through the fire department too. Yes. Yeah, and it's permitted through the fire department, but I'll also be sending out a letter to all the abutters about testing their wells prior to the blasting. Okay, um, testing their wells as far as the, the content of the water. Um, I guess what about uh, how many gallons per? No, it'll be, it'll be water quality, not volume. Not volume, because could that affect, I mean? No, th this is very shallow blast. This is very shallow blasting. It's only going two feet below the finished grade. Um, so it's only going down. So if you look at the building it, where the driveway now, if, if you look at the building and it's kind of in the back, the, lo the low building, it's only going two feet below that slab. So it shouldn't affect any kind of ground water. They're going to be small blasts because we're so close to the um, buildings. Uh, the piece that we can get is the piece that's kind of right around our building. So they have to do really um, shallow, um, small blasts, a lot of them, rather than big blasts, or they're going to destroy our building. We have a block foundation there. So if it doesn't, our foundation, it's absolutely well, you'll not be notified to do yours. You'll be notified before this even happens. Uh, yeah, okay, but I guess I'm in just looking at it, that piece that's that's jutting up there now, what would, why couldn't you just leave that the way it is? It, I mean, it all is so kind of, you don't see just these, you know, block yeah. buildings. Yeah, so some of that, the, the, front, the front section of that is gonna stay. The blasting we're doing is for the parking lot. So half, it's about half of that, half of that knob in the front is gonna stay. It's the half, the back half that's gonna blast, be blasted off. So we have to get a, a, a DOT permit from Mass Highway for anything within 500 feet of the, the state highway. So that front section of that is going to stay. That yeah, that's what you're going to see. But we are going to loom seed that and landscape that. You won't just okay. see lights there. And and what do you what are you thinking time frame wise? Uh, so so we've been in we've had the blasting permit in front of Mass DOT since January first of 2023. And we still don't have it, so I am not no, going to. There are no rush. <laughs> I am not going to. I would like to say within the next four to six weeks, but um, wheels turn slowly. I, I I cannot. I can't even. I can't even say. I wish I could say. We have to. Right. Once we get the permit, we have to put signage up for six weeks prior. So it's going to be at probably at least twelve weeks. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah, well, thank you, Kathy. Anybody else? Go ahead, Bob. Um, Bob. Oh, your name and address, please. You can come on up That's to the microphone. Bob. <laughs> yeah, they know who Bob is. He's a frequent flyer. Bob Sweet, 50 Milford Street. Um, did I? I'm looking for clarification. Give me the microphone, Bob. 
Is the underground storage unit not in yet? No, it's not. In. So the three inch minus that's in that parking lot area, you're going to dig that up again and then put it in? Just for, the, just for the way the chambers go. So that's the base. That's the base that the underground base and that's all your storage. Yeah. And then you have these units that go in in that. Now, the two inch, uh, the two foot diameter pipe that goes under the building yeah. is in, right? Is in, yes. But right now we have that stream. The stream from the top diverted into that, so we don't fix that. They right, and that's what's coming from behind the building. Hey guys, through, through, through the, can I interrupt uh, for one second here? I think we're getting off topic. This was a conf this, uh, it's all conservation this stuff. This all deal with about conservation. Meeting. We can't relive the, uh, the proposed uh, yeah. uh, plan again. We're good. So. We're good, Bob. Bill. So, good. All right, all right so you. thank you. We're going to... If nobody else has any uh, different questions, we're going to wait for our town engineer to meet with John and go over everything. That should hopefully address everything for the conservation, and then we'll go from And that will either be the 1st or the 22nd. 1st of April. Want to put it on for the 1st of April if they get it done in the time? The only thing we have right now, right? She's looking at me like, Put it That's on, on the Jeff. 22nd. <laughs> well, let, let, you know what? If Jeff has it done, this might be something that they can take care of where we don't even have to be at a meeting. This, this is not a hearing. We're not opening anything. It is. So, Bill, are you comfortable with that? What's that? I mean, see this what is Jeff something. Does. If Jeff looks at this plan, yeah, he, he, says, Jeff hey, I've already back acknowledged back. this. We don't have to even, we don't, they don't have to bring this in front of us again. We no, just want we'll conservation. Just advise, we'll just advise of Jeff's findings at the next meeting. All right. Thank you. Okay. No, this is no public hearing, so correct. We'll just if he comes back, either positive it can or negative. Be done administratively, if it's thank you, everybody, for sticking it out. All right. Everybody. Um, uh, well, no one showed up for the Arma. No, that's all right. We have a motion no, no. on the floor. Uh, is, 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 you a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Right, thank you. Good night. Made the motion. Who seconded? Uh, made the motion. Made the motion and, and wow. Very second. Wow. wow. Hey, Jason. All right, guys. Good night. Yeah. It was a concern for the science.